of Sister Liz Durham. May you be comforted by Almighty God. The first time I met Sister Liz is when we were about to come into curtains to live. The house was being renovated and Sister Liz, she made it her business to be there to do whatever she can to make sure that our stay in curtains is comfortable. I appreciated that very much. She was such a sweet, kind, and caring person. She loves her daughter. In fact, at times she would bring along her daughter to do whatever she could to make us happy. I really love Sister Liz. She was a giving person. Sometimes you would hear her say, Sister Edwards, a bag is in the garage. That belongs to you. When you take out what is in it, just put back the bag in the garage. And when I would go and get that bag, inside that bag is breadfruit, vegetables. You, you know, she was such a giving person. Pumpkin. Sister Liz, I thank you very much for what you would have done for my family in curtains. Also, she loved the Lord. She always come to church until when she couldn't come anymore. Phyllis has gone to be with the Lord. And those of you who are grieving, I want you to have hope. But once you know the Lord as your personal Savior, you will meet with Sister Liz again. One of Sister Liz, Liz's desire was to see her daughter get baptized. But she didn't make it. But I am happy to say that her daughter was present at the baptism. And Dad, we thank you very much that you were willing to consent for your daughter to be baptized. I know your daughter. Find your comfort in the Lord. For us at church, we will miss Sister Liz. Always active. One of our songs that she loved was I go to the master. And I can hear that song ringing in my ears. A sister Liz would stand to encourage our heart with that song. I go to the master in prayer. For you, loved one, I know you feel it, but I want to tell you, Sister Liz said to go to the Lord, go to the master in prayer. May her soul rest in peace. Thank you very much. Enjoy your day. Come today. Um, let me tell you something about Sister Liz. You won't be surprised to know that. I didn't even know we are relative, right? But one night, I was in my 20s. I used to be around my mother and father. And their parents leave all of them and go away. About five girls and two boys. Me alone stay with these children. Until the parents come back, the parents fight and dance and thing. But, and in those days, it wasn't so bright like are these boys now. Your children will be half naked and you respect them still. And people, and I was in my 20s. But it is now, them boy, they put their hand away and carry it. They play bright. Yes. So, so, and up to now, she was the smallest, and I used to call her Baba Liz. I miss you so much, but what we will do, we will turn to God and say, praise God for everything. Be glad, say, whether in good times or bad times, still praise him. And we have to expect anything like that, danger, trouble, anything Job say. 
And these are travel time and short days. So we still thank God. So let me let the church, I am our church member of this church before you. And I give the church the last condition and the people around and my neighbor and all who visit and from all around. This song will say to you, and I pray they help me say, Oh my God, we all up with God. And I pray they, and I pray they, oh my God. We got to work with God and a great day. Nobody don't know this song? Who have been fighting and say, Oh, Jehovah, before I go, at the final say, Jehovah. The musician don't help me. How does Jehovah have the final say? Before the thing gets messed up. Before the thing is messed up and before you go, let me see another last one. I bless the Lord at all. Some frontal, my spirit shall continue me and my mouth. My soul shall make a voice and This is the scripture. The song shall ever find me glad. Oh, my. Just lift it up with me. Just lift up the body for me. Yes. Just lift it up like this can be comfortable for her. And for you. Okay. The background. Alright, you go right here, but just stay here. Good morning to everyone. Special greetings going out to the Bewey family on behalf of my family. I'm only human, I'm just a woman, help me believe in all that I could be and all that I am, show me the stairway.
好。So this is it, gentlemen, I want to pray at the same day. I'm just going to sing this, um, Mr. Barnes' worship. This whole life is filled with sorrow. Yeah. 
Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom. Okay. Pleasant good evening. Good evening and morning. Sorry to everyone. Let me welcome you to this celebration service of our sister, um, Lizian Stephen Durham. Today we are not here to mourn like those who have no hope, but we are here to celebrate and to rejoice for a life that was an example for someone who knew God personally and served Him faithfully. You know, as we look at each other, we see imperfection in all of us. But nonetheless, God's grace is sufficient to enable us to live for Him. And so today, we are going to celebrate. Amen! Amen. We are going to sing, we are going to dance. Amen. Because our sister has gone to be with the Lord. For to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord. So we're going to have some. We're going to have. Let's get some instrumental at this moment. Just play one for us. And then we are going to go down and we're going to have the casket up the road. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The 
righteous running into it and they say a time to be born and a time to die a time to plant and a time to pluck what is planted lord that was being our dwelling place in all generations before the mountains were brought forth or even thou hadst formed the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting thou art gone and a time to build up and a time to win and a time to love the time to mourn and a time to dance and a time to cast over the stone he that dwelleth in the secret place of the most high shall abide under the shadow of the almighty i will say to the lord he is my fortress and my refuge my god in him will i trust amen again for those of you arrived late let me welcome you to kingdom life ministries we are located in the lovely town of barali we are a member church of pentecostal assemblies of the west indies and i am the host pastor carlton edwards it is our pleasure and delight to serve with you today to participate in this celebration service of our sister Lizian Stevens Durham. And I want us all to celebrate together as we honor the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. At this moment, I want to welcome my wife to do the opening prayer for us this morning. Let's bow our head and close our eyes as she prays to the Lord. Hallelujah. Let us pray. Father, we give you praise. We give you thanks. We are indeed grateful to be alive today. We thank you for the sunshine. Hallelujah. And so, God, even as we come before you this morning, I ask in the name of Jesus that you will touch our hearts today. Hallelujah. Oh, God, I am praying that, Lord, we will look to you from whence cometh our help. God, we are truly grateful to be participating in this whole service for our sister. Oh, God, Heavenly Father, we know is with you at this time and so God I am praying that us who are left behind that we will make it right with you in the name of Jesus we pray for the bereaved oh God may you bless and comfort them bless all of us who are supporting them this morning and so I commit the service into your hands God I ask that you will superintend that you will have your way oh God moment we'll now invite our worship team to lead us in some lively songs today as we lift up the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. hallelujah. Someone say praise the Lord. Amen. Somebody say God is good Amen. all the time. Amen. God is your pretty hands together for the Lord is here this morning as we pray. I will go
Because I know this is the personality we grew up together from the time when I was a little girl, she used to the evangelical church. And I know she died being a safe person. And as I usually say, funeral, we grudge she. Because she has gone to the place where people like you and I want to be. So I'm here to celebrate it all this morning. Hallelujah. Our first song is, it is all right for the family. And the rest of it will rejoice in the Lord. Praise God. Ready?
body and sisters on the corpse here. She is present with the Lord. If your soul is your heart present with the Lord this morning, because as Hebrews 27, 9, 27 says, it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this, the judgment. Hallelujah. When the road is called up yonder, and the trumpet of the Lord shall stop. First Corinthians chapter 4 and verse 13 and words. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout and with the voice of the archangel. And we which are alive and remain shall be caught up. If we shall be caught up in these days with the road. Let me see how the Christian is in their house. Celebrate because in their heart is right with the Lord. Praise God. Right?
that praise the Lord we'll be caught up we'll be caught up how many of you would like to be caught up bless the Lord let's continue to live the life that God wants us to live so when the trumpet song we will not be left behind thank you we have a seat a while Hallelujah. Our first scripture reading will be taken from John 14, 1. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That where I am, there he may be also. And whether I go, he know, and the way he know. Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. Here in the scripture reading. Bless the Lord this morning. Hallelujah. At this time, we will be blessed with the number from the violin.
If that song ain't beautiful, in heaven it will be better. In heaven it will be sweeter. Oh no, so this is among the angels that sing. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And as a result, at this time is my duty to call and her daughter. Hallelujah. Kelian Kelani to do a promise. Would you, would you come at this time? Nicolina and Tiana, please stand by as well. After Kelani, there will be one scripture and then Nico and Tiana. A daughter's promise. Every time I smile, every time I sigh, I think of your face and a tear escapes my eye. You were my wall, my inspiration and my heart. But when you left me, I thought I would fall apart. You were my best friend, my one true confident, confidant. And that's not all you were. You were also my mom. I didn't want to live without you, but you would have wanted me to. And if there's anyone I want to make happy, that anyone is you. I would have given anything to have you back. But I know that I know that it wasn't meant to be. But you are still watching from up there, and I know you're watching me. I'll make you proud, Mom. I'm going to fulfill your wish. You're going to see me and smile. That's your daughter's promise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. Natalie, would you come? We do the rest next reading. And if you have a chip boot um, uh, out of service, you will see open chip boot there that's gone already. So there will be no open chip boot in between. Good morning, church. Scripture reading is taken from 1 Corinthians chapter 15, from verses 50 to 50. Now, this I say, brethren, that flesh and blood cannot inherit the kingdom of God, neither does corruption inherit incorruption. Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall be changed. In a moment, in, a, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible, must put on incorruption, and this mortal must put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall have put on incorruption, and this mortal shall have put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sin? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Here it is.
smile with his soul. Will you smile with your soul? You can make it well. Only one thing, just trust in Jesus. Today, if you are not a believer, I urge you don't leave this church without asking the Lord in your heart. At this time, we're going to change our position again. Worship team, we're going to do a congregation song. Rock of ages, put your stand in the list. Church. 
we too would like to extend our condolences to the bereaved family. As Christians, we have that assurance that when we are challenged and we face the many trials in our lives, that our hearts can keep on singing, knowing that we will behold that city and Jesus Christ, the Savior of the world.
Why? Yeah. Let's uh, be at praise at this time. For you to come and give us. The eulogy of our sister. before she died. And I went up there straight after school just to see her and to talk with her. And when I saw her, tears came to my eyes. But one thing I do know, that the least know where she is going. And one thing I can say this morning to the sisters is that she was a strong woman. She was full of strength and full of energy. She was a determined person. And when her mind is made up, no matter what you say, you're going to change it. You could have preach. She said to me, Fraser, this is it. And this was it. No matter what I say, she would say, okay, let me, let me end that conversation there now. Because nothing you see is going to change my belief. And that is who she was. And I thank God this morning because I know where she gone. She gone to be with the Lord. And she may be watching down on us. And may be smiling and our hearts are broken. Because she's not here in body. But I know that she's somewhere around God's throne. So, oh death. Where is thy sting? Oh grave. Where is your victory? I know death has no power over the sons and the daughters of Jesus Christ. So that's why I can echo those words. Where is your victory? Because to be absent from this body is to be present with the Lord. And there where she is today. So this is the eulogy of the late Lizzie and Stephen Durham. Lizzie and lover Stephen Durham, affectionately known as Liz or Joggy, to close friends and relatives, was born on December 9th, 1977, to the late Pauline Stevens and Pam Oliver of Barony. She was the last of six children, Beverly, deceased, Rohan, Philbert, Carcel, Cheryl, Lyndon, better known as Big K, Acre. Louisiana was raised and nurtured by her grandmother, Georgina of Cottons. Liz attended the Bowery Infant School and the Anglican School and the Bowery Secondary School. As a matter of fact, she was a graduate of the Bowery Secondary School, a class of 1995. Going to church was an option for Tante Gina. So at a tender age, apart from home and school, the evangelical church was the venue for any other activity, whether we like it or not. After graduating, she migrated to Montreal, Canada, where she lived for seven years. On her return to St. Vincent, 
she reconnect with her church friend, Rafik Darum. And they got married in the year 2006. This union produced one lovely daughter. So on the 31st of January, 2009, Liz and Rafik welcomed their beautiful princess, Kilani. Liz loved and cared for Kilani with every fiber of her being. She shared a special bond that seemed unbreakable. First and foremost, she introduced Kilani to know and to love Jesus Christ at an early age. Manners and respect were also high on her agenda. Kilani made her mother extremely proud when she passed the Caribbean primary exit assessment exam, CPEA, in 2021 and entered the girls high school, the school of her dream. Kelani got baptized last month, which was another great achievement for celebration. However, she was not granted that opportunity to do so. Her father, however, stood by her side. Mother and daughter had a remarkable bond. They were good friends. She was the joy and the pride of her heart. Liz was full of life. Beautiful inside and out. Funny. She was, <laughs> she was the forever 23. <laughs> Every year she celebrates her birthday. Liz for all the bit. 23, Fraser. 23, Chamsey. It's always 23. So I say, in the next couple of years, the next 10 years, she and Kelani would have been 23. <laughs> Liz was a great sister and friend. She loved farming, cooking, sewing. The latter did not get enough time, the latter she did not get enough time to master. She was also a miser. Liz and money, for her money had a real sense. Her money had sense enough. So she would save hers and spend the others that comes along. All the distance separated the sisters. Listen, our siblings, they are grateful for WhatsApp, video chat, where they kept in touch daily. Sometimes three times for the group chatting. I could recall sometimes I'm there, and me and she talking, and they would call. And she said, D, I'm going to answer this enough because they're never done for now. When we finish, I will call them back. And that is exactly what she would do. She often teased them, saying, you know what? I'm the cutest sibling. The straightest nose. And when Kilani came, up, came, came across, then Kilani was the cutest of them all. Liz never wanted her sisters to worry. So she kept so many things that they would have wanted to know from them. I begged her on many occasions. I said, Lisa, it's time for you to tell them. She said, Fraser, you remember what I tell you? Shut your mouth up. <laughs> and I would keep quiet, but in my heart I would wish that she would whisper something to one of them at some time. And she wouldn't. She was a strong person. Very strong. And she would say to me, listen. My siblings have their own issues and their own problems. I am not going to burden them with mine. You and I know what is happening. Let us look at this today. And I would say to her, you don't want to see you in a man. You better do something better than that. And she would say to me oftentimes, Fraser, all I'm really concerned about right now is Kalani. That was all her desire, Kalani. It was always you. It was always you. I remember when she called and she told me what she planned to do. So you can't do it on your own. But God. <laughs> Kilani, your mom loves you with all she got. Her life and everything she think of, every time she called, she would always mention your name. I remember saying to her one day, 
regardless to what it is, I would stand by Kilani. I talked to her when she was in grade one. And from ever since I bonded with her, and I always loved and cared for her, and I said I would stick with her. Regardless to what the outcome will, will be, I would be there for her. And Kilani, I told you already. You know my number, you know yours. And I will always, you will always be in my heart. You will always be in my heart. And my prayer for you is that you will become all that your mom wanted you to become. Fulfill her dreams. Fulfill her aspirations. Let the light of God shine upon you. Hallelujah. Let it be a reality. Her sister Carcel described her as confidential. One who, who can share her problems with and knew that she would give her the best advice and the best counsel. She also cooked online, sharing step-by-step -step recipes for them. Cheryl said she was my best friend. We talked every day and everything. We sang. We worship on the phone. She often testified of God's goodness towards me and towards her. I had a scripture for everything and that was so true. She always had a remedy so true for her illness. And believed in eating healthy to the point of having her own backyard garden. And I must really say something about that backyard garden. I remember she called me and she said to me, you know that scholarship? I said, for the what? He said, I'm going down to the man. man. Then people give me a scholarship day. So I'm going to learn how to do organic things, organic way. And you know me, I love that. So I said, where are you going to do with Kilani? She said, I'm organized, so I have to stay by Auntie Pat. So she was studying. And Auntie Pat, I know, Kilani Moy believes in you. And thank you for what you have done and what you will continue to do for her. And she went off. When she came back, she gave me another story. <laughs> she said, them not easy, don't they? They only want your money. When people are coming, they're cooking nice as food. When nobody now come get a tired eat macaroni. <laughs> but she made it. And she got a certificate and she came back and they came and they did the garden. And she called me, she said, Fraser, come on, man. You got to get one in the back yard, yard. Look plenty land you have behind the man. They'll come and do everything for you. You'll get tanked, you'll get this. And she convinced me. I mean, any minute she'd be scared. Until she convinced me. Me say, me go tell Fraser, man. Me go me tell Fraser. Fraser said, nothing like that. <laughs> nothing no. Me say, man, come on, man. I'll go get everything. You'll get a tank for water. A real, a real thing. But um, look, I'm Mr. Wan Rung. They'll go real nice. He said, me tell him, me not want none of that. And me go back and me tell she, me say, girl, you got to convince her yourself, you know. Because he say, no, I don't know that. You know, and when the garden, every time I come, she came with me to see the garden. And Kilani, sometimes we went in, not true? We went in, it's real, but you know, because you have a little slope up on the hill there, you have to wet by the two. And you're wetting. And all that's organic. And when the cops were ready, she would advertise them on the KLM, come get your organic lettuce. And come get you that, and come get you that. So she was really all into it. So it paid off in the long run. She was very ambitious. I remember Shane with us and say, listen to me, we have some course offering. Which one do you want to do? I bring the papers, it's sign up. And I carry it in. And she started it. That was 2018. And during somewhere between, she couldn't make it. I remember carrying her home one day when I said to her, let me put that on hold. Because you don't miss out too much. And we decided to put it on hold. But she was never able to complete it. But she was always an ambitious young woman. Her brother was hand to him. But yet she wouldn't tell him the truth. Every day after putting on his shoes, religiously, Rohan said after he finished putting on his shoes, he will call his sister. And knowing this, that voice was strong like a lion. So you couldn't tell if she had pain or any ache. Hey, brothers! So she so strong. And that is what she wanted them to believe, that she was strong. And she was strong. She was a fighter. She fight it. She fight. She fight. But then, in the end, she said to me, whatever, the Lord chooses. Is 
Sige, huwag kita. So he said, the chat, he would miss hearing her warm voice. And when he come home, see her smile. Liz attended this church for the past years and took up membership on Taylor Cadet. She was very active in the Women Ministry Department. And although it was a group where the young Kilanis and Casey's age group, Liz and her close friend Natalie, Natalie, I know Natalie. I know you will feel it, Natalie, but we all know how much she loves you and she cares for you as well. You all were like buddies. Sometimes on the floor they would sit and they would talk and they would eat. They were like buddies. One in a pan, in a pot. They were like that. So they would bring Casey and Kilani to the woman ministries. And sometimes you had to sit with them. You had to sit with them outside of the car. This might be too high for them. But they were always there with their parents. She was very creative and competitive, composing songs to perform on such occasions. I remember her composing one, but that only with her. <laughs> yeah, that, that came out of top, man. Her last of love for things of God was contagious. She loved to discuss scriptures and held on to her point strongly. Any videos that align with her belief, she would share them with me and she would convince me, want to convince me to accept them as truth. And I would have to fight to say, that is your way, but I am not going on it today. But she had a strong belief, and as I said before, she knew what she wanted and what she believed. She was a strong mother of the world. She studied the world. She loved God. She loved God's word. She was recently enlisted as an usher. However, this thing was short-lived. The last Sunday she was in church, though, she was ushering at the door. Sister Liz knew she was ill for a long time. But she trusted God to the very end for her healing. She was also open that if healing doesn't come, she would be prepared for whatever God's will. But again, my concern is Kilani. Liz was surrounded by love. throughout her illness and she expressed how grateful she was for those who love her and those who were concerned about her and all those who extended their hands to her those who bring the food sometimes sister Roseanne sister Gordon those soup and boil up and sometimes Natalie would eat because she ain't eating them and sister Natalie I remember the last time Sister Natalie took out the Sister Natalie took out the what? Said, give me that man. Give me a pig tail man. You never eat it. And she sit down and she eat it all. Sister Natalie. You would have left. But God is good. The wrath of Kilani and all the siblings, Rafiq and all the other relatives and we express heartfelt thanks to everyone who supported us in one way or the other. Ladies and loved ones, Stephen Darrow, gone but not forgotten. Sleep, sleep on in sweet peace. This of you. Okay, thank you very much, Sister Fraser. And there we had an overview of who Liz was. So then at this moment, we're going to have some tribute, and they are coming in this order. Kingdom Life Ministries Women's Group. So you can begin to ascend the stage, followed by Sister Jalim, then uh, Brother Kenai. After which we are going to have the whole body. Put your hands together for Kingdom Life Women's Choir. Aren't you looking lovely? Come on, you can do better than that. Thank you. 
Yes, that was the kingdom life, woman ministry. Could we give them a hand again, please? We won't have to cry anymore. That is Mr. Pastor Barnes. Fortunate, I had Mr. Barnes um, practicing, practicing for some time. To be honest, and if you notice, I had my phone, I have it done. So I attempt to sing it, but I was shut down this morning. <laughs> no, they would have done justice to that song. Mr. Jolly, are you ready? Won't the musician get in place? As we continue, we want to wrap up this service. Special good afternoon to everyone. I would just like to personally say my condolences to the family and to Kilani. I would have experience of met Sister Liz through Kilani. I was her teacher. And one of the things I do know for a fact is that this woman really loved her child. She was one out of a lot of parents who reached out to me and always asking and calling, wanting to know about her homework and assignments. So she really 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 love Kilani and I just want to tell Kilani to keep on holding on. I know what it feels like to lose a parent. It's hard and it's hard but I just want you to remember that God is with you. God is with you. When you're darling, this song I'm going to sing is called Blessing. Oh, 
Especially when she smiles. Smile from killing. Okay. This was an extraordinary repose. I always smiling. I didn't even know she was sick because I saw her in church like by your shadow one. It's like my mommy told me the news. Like, what? Joking. I just saw this in church. Smiling and greeting, you know. But it just shows what kind of person she is. Strong. She don't look like her situation. Believe in God, that God will see her through in spite of the circumstance. Um, I know Liz was a worship. Cheryl, I tried. This Liz was a worshiper. And one thing I really like with her, that day when she rededicated her life to Christ, that was a joyful moment for the church and for the angels in heaven. I know she is with God. She is with God. Oh, Jesus. Follow you, worship you. Oh, oh, oh.
hands and brings peace. followers. Before I do, let me, on behalf of my family, the administrative board and members of Kingdom Life Ministries, extend our deepest sympathy to the bereaved family. We know what you're feeling because we would have experienced it ourselves. And one of the saddening things about death is that it takes our loved ones and they are not going to come back to us. 
What is possible is that we can go to them. And for us to go to them, where our sister is, we must know the Lord Jesus as our Savior. Amen. Amen. And if you don't, make sure you give him a chance in your life today. Jesus' last word to his disciples, he said to them, let not your heart be troubled. Amen. Amen. It means don't be disturbed. Don't be distressed. They were disturbed by the fact that their good friend with whom they work for several years is about to leave them. And so it disrupted their, their flow of things. And in their mind, even though Christ said, I'll come again in their minds, they won't show. How do I know that? It's because after he died, some of the disciples were going somewhere and they were saying, this man said that he will rise in three days. But what happened? We haven't seen anything. But they did not know they were speaking to the one who was dead, but now alive. So he said, don't be troubled. Let me explain what the word trouble means. It means, or it is used figuratively to describe people's stress at something that is surprising, exciting, or a troubling event. When we look at the root word for the word distress, it means to bind, to tie up, to restrict. Thus, it comes to mean a narrow place in life in which one is bound or restricted. Distress speak of trials and tribulation that we experience in life, don't we? All of us, sometimes they cripple us. Sometimes we cannot arise. We are so shut up. We are so encaged. We are weak. We don't have the strength and the energy to continue our normal state in life. Because the event was so dramatic. And my friends, let me tell you, that is one of those things that touches every one of us. It doesn't matter how strong you are. When my mother died, I tried to play strong, but I had to cry. And I didn't want anybody to see me crying. But I was crying deep on the inside. And I always said to people, cry! Jesus himself wept because one of his friends had died. And so we have here the body of one of our sisters, a mother, a friend, someone who was close to all of us. Shouldn't we cry? Yes, we cry because we miss her. But we don't cry without hope. We cry realizing we miss her. But one of these days, we shall see her again. Amen. Amen. If a man die, what will happen? He certainly will live again. So in this life, we are faced with all kinds of distress. And life is filled with troubles and trials. We heard of the incident in Jamaica recently. A woman was murdered along with four children. Isn't that disturbing? Yeah. We hear of rapes and you name it. Uh, all kinds of things are happening. And the trouble sometimes, it happens to people who are close to us. And it does disturb us. Nonetheless, Jesus has said, don't let your heart be troubled. Don't be troubled to the extent that you cannot live your life normally. And let me tell you, today it might be a rough time. This might be a rough period for you. But listen folks, a day will come when you will get through that storm in your life. We read earlier, a time to live and a time to die. A time to build up and a time to destroy. A time for this and a time for that. So whatever your circumstance is now, it will not be forever. So trials and troubles come upon both the just and the unjust. A, a little child asked a question a few months ago. And in this thought of faith, 
She said, we pray for Sister Liz. We pray for this and that. But they die. Isn't that disturbing? But we need to understand. Though we may desire that they live, we have to understand that they have a desire as well. And not only that, but the plan and the will of God, the purposes of God for that individual takes precedent over your wish and my wish. Amen. So when we pray, we believe God to heal them. If we don't heal them, we say thank you Lord for what you have done. In everything, what do we do? We give thanks for this is the will of God concerning us. Amen. We would have loved that sister Liz be here to witness the baptismal service of her daughter. We would have loved her to be here to be a part of the choir. But God had a better plan for her. As a matter of fact, some of you don't know the pain that she had. When you were asleep at night, she couldn't rest. She could not while you were asleep. And so listen to me. God knew what he has done. None of us give ourselves life. And it is God who gives. And it is God who takes away. And what do we say? Blessed be the name of the Lord. So let not your heart be troubled, my friend. I know it's painful. But you have to continue to live. Amen. Love your children. Go to work. Be yourself. I'm not being cruel. But I'm honest. And I'm going in accordance to the word of God. Don't be troubled. And uh, uh, most importantly. Our sister. Made it right with God. Before she departed this life. And that is the, oh my God, that is the comforting thought. I wish that we can have funerals where we can hear that the deceased made it right before they depart. We need to have more funerals like these. And listen to me, God takes joy and delight in the death of the saints. But when the unsaved and the wicked die, what happened? He does not delight in that. So those of you who are here, you don't know Jesus as your Lord and your Savior. I don't know if you'll be the next one. What if they should come by you this evening wrapped up in, in a case looking like money? Would you go after it? Can I tell you that every day we live, we are dying? Can I tell you that every day we live, death is walking beside us? mercy while you are still alive here today. Can I even further say that we need to be thankful to God. Give him thanks and acknowledge his goodness to us every day as we live. The Bible says his goodness leads to what? Repentance. Are you grateful for God's provision? His protection? Are you grateful for his love towards you? So the troubles and the distress come upon both the just and the unjust. I read in the scriptures there was a man whose name was James. He was locked up by, by, by the, the, the political leader that day. I believe the church prayed. And what happened? He was killed. And then that pleased them well. So they locked up another one whose name was Peter. And the church prayed. And look what happened. God sent his angels and he went into the prison and he freed him. Listen to me. The hands of God is sovereign and he makes the final decision when it comes to your life and to my life. Will you surrender to him today? Let's move on. So Jesus said, just as how you believe in the Father, I want you to believe in me. You know what? We are one. What I say is what the Father said. I don't see nothing different from him. We are one. We work together as a team. So as you believe the Father, believe what I say. He said, let not your heart be troubled. Yes, you might be disturbed, but continue to function. Live your life. 
One of the things I want you to understand about God this morning is this. That God is immutable. So let me explain that to you. Immutability is that perfection of God by which he is devoid or empty of all change. So he cannot change in his being, in who he is, in his character, he can change. In his perfection, he can't change. When it comes to his purpose, he will not change. When it comes to his promises, he will not change. And listen to me. God cannot get better. Neither can he get worse. Amen. There can no decay can take place in his character, neither the growth. Oh my God. My God. This is someone whom you need to believe in. Because you see, stability and character here and integrity, he is not a false person. He will not deceive or mislead you, ladies and gentlemen. Somebody said, change is always for better. Isn't that so? And sometimes people change for worse. But since God is absolute perfection, improvement or deterioration for him is impossible. Malachi 3, 6 teaches the doctrine of immutability. It says, I, the Lord God, I do not change. People of Bahari, those of you who are listening to me online, I, the Lord God, I do not change. Your friends have changed. Your relatives have changed. Governments are changing. Everything is changing, but God remains constant. God remains the same. James 1.17 indicates there is no variable or shift in shadow when it comes to God. Throughout the world, changes are taking place. Many of us are planning for Christmas 2019. But what happened? COVID. 2020 we were planning to have. I don't even want to mention it. But that couldn't happen. Our lives were disrupted. We had no power over what was taking place. But here it is. Do you know God was not disturbed? Isn't this someone to trust your life with? They told us to trust the science. And what did science did? Fail us. Science fail us. Science is not the answer, people. Who is the answer? Come on, shout the name. Who is the answer? Listen to me. Jesus is the answer for everything. Pastor, are you serious? Yes. When it comes to sickness and disease, he has the ability to cure whomsoever he wishes. If you have a criminal, no reform system in the government could change the criminal. Because criminality has to do with your, your heart. The heart of man is unchanged by physical means. Man's problem is spiritual, not physical. So he needs someone spiritual. Not even demons or devils could help you. Not even all that could help you. Make you worse. Put you in a bondage. Amen. Only Jesus. Come on, somebody. I feel we should call that name. Let's shout that name today. Jesus. He's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He does not change. Now watch this. Because he does not change. I 
want to be assured of two things. Number one, his love for us remains the same. There is nothing that can change John 3, 16. What says what? Let's say it together. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes on him shall not perish but have eternal life. Let me continue. For God did not send his son into this world to condemn the world but that the world through him might be saved. That's why he came, people, apparently, those online, he came to save us because we needed a savior. Do you know him as your Lord today? Do you know him as your master? Do you know him as your friend? Do you know him as your provider and counselor? Yes. Oh my God. My God. So because he does not change, his love remains the same. Oh, don't talk about his promises. They can't change. They can't change. Amen. He said, the soul that sin it, what will happen? So there's a way that seemed it right to a man, but what happened? It says he who is often reproof and harden his heart and stiff with his neck, what will happen? Those can't change. They can't change. And we need to understand that. He said to them, I'm leaving you to go and prepare a place. Oh yes. By his going here, he was, he was talking about his death. That's why he came. Angel said to Mary, Matthew 1, 21. Jesus will come. He will be your savior. You'll have to die for your sins. And then after his death, we are told that after three days, he rose from the dead. Amen. This, this, this man is great. I've never heard anyone died and rose three days after. As a matter of fact, I never heard anybody say they're going to die tomorrow. And then two days after, you're going to see me again. Anybody? Could raise your hand if you heard that, please. Or maybe you intend to say that. Raise your hand if you intend to say that. He's the only one. He knew, he knows the present and he knows the future. We don't know it. That's why we need to see if the Lord tarries. You understand? We will see you and do this and that tomorrow. So by going, he spoke about his death and also his ascent to heaven. It's like someone going ahead of you. I remember my father used to go ahead of us in the mountain and he used to make preparations so that when we come, we just flow smoothly into what we are doing. The Lord has gone to prepare a place for us. Amen. Amen. To set things up for us by God. Not so many persons are fortunate for someone to do that for them. In this life, we, we struggle. Some persons, uh, you know, they fear better than others. And so they enjoy a future, some inheritance. Not many of us can, but here the Lord is saying, Hey, I'm going to prepare a place for you. Amen. A place so that you'll be admitted into eternal life. We are told in Genesis, God prepared a place for man. What happened? That place was destroyed. Man forfeited his enjoyment in that place by disobeying God and listening to God's enemy. And so what happened? He was driven out and it was, he was unable to go back. But hear me today, ladies and gentlemen, the Lord has gone to prepare a place. We put it in some. God has gone to prepare a mansion for me. How the rest goes? Far, far away. Over the sea. How the rest goes? There will be no more. There will be no more. Amen. So he said, I have gone to make preparation. And where has he gone? Not to America that is struggling today. Not to England. But he has returned to heaven to be where the Father is. 
And he who is above all is over all. And he sees all. And he holds his world in his hands. So he went to heaven from where he came. He said, I will return. I'm coming back. You remember those movies with Rambo? When he almost knocked him out, stayed a while here, and what he did? He come back, not true? And when he come back, he come back with vengeance. Well, you see, Satan thought that he had Christ. Yes, they killed him and placed him on a cross. But he rose the third day. He ascended into heaven. And listen to me. One of these days, he'll be coming back. Amen. Amen. Acts 11 said, when Jesus was ascended to heaven, the angel said to his friends, Hello, this same Jesus, whom you're seeing taken up into heaven, will come in like manner. The question is, are you ready for him? Are you prepared? But I would not have you to be ignorant brothers concerning those who die, those who sleep in the Lord. Don't sorrow, folks. Don't cry over Sister Liz. Hallelujah. For we believe that Jesus died. And not only that, but he rose again. Even so also, them which sleep in Jesus will what? God bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not perceive them with sleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, uh, the voice of the archangel, with the trump of God. And what will happen? Those who are dead in Christ, they will what? They will rise first. So if a Christian was killed and the body was burnt and hidden and nobody knew, it, uh, even up to today where they're hidden, one of these days, the body and the soul will be rejoined together. Amen. Amen. And so shall we be with the Lord. Folks, he said he's coming again. The final thing he said to the folks is that I am the way, the truth, and the life. Understand this, people. The only way to the Father is through whom? Jesus. The word way speaks of the whole region through which the way leads. You want to enter into God's kingdom? You must pass through Jesus who is the way. Now why is this way necessary? This way is necessary because our sins have separated us from God. I didn't say your sins, our sins. For we have all sinned and fall short of the glory of God. There is none that do it righteous. The Bible says all we like sheep we have gone astray. People today rather evil than good. People hate Christianity and church. Oh, can the men just raise their hand in the church and give me a wave please? All the men. Come on all the men. Wow. This is the most men we have seen for the longest while in church. Where the ladies? Ladies, give me a wave. Oh my God. Look at ladies. I hope you come and capture that, you know. Look at the ladies here to the far outnumber the men. I don't know what happened, but men seem to fear church. I don't know why. Come, somebody talk to me. Men, why are you afraid of church? This is a good place. Good, good place. If things not right in your life, you go turn around. Because the head of the church is concerned about every area of your life. Does it mean to say we would not make mistakes and mess up? Yes, we do. But we don't stay there. Because our Father still said, come. Do you have messed up? Do you have broken my heart? I still love you. Nobody can change that. Yes, why this way is necessary is because our sins have separated us from God. Why this way is necessary is because this way leads us back to God. Backsliders, you need to come back through Jesus. Why this way is necessary is because there is no other way that leads to the Father. Why is this way necessary? Because it leads to eternal life. Why is this way necessary? Because all the other ways that seem right lead to destruction. So Jesus said, I am the way. I am the way. 
Sister Liz passed through that way. Amen. Amen. If you have not yet, yet crossed that bridge, I encourage you to do so today. What qualifies you to enter into God's kingdom? The Bible says in John 3 and verse 3, Verily Jesus said unto um, Nicodemus, Except a man be born again. When we say born again, we mean born from above. At one time, all of us were born by our parents, physically. If we are going to make it into God's kingdom, we must be born from above. And listen to me, no mother can do this. No pastor can do this. No accomplishment in our life can accomplish this for you and me. It's only through whom? Jesus, the son of the living God. If you are going to make it into God's kingdom, you must first admit that you are a sinner, for we all have sinned and fall short of his glory. If you want to make it in his kingdom, please understand that you cannot save yourself from the wrath of God to come. There is wrath that's going to come and nobody can save you. You want to run and hide. Where are you going to run and hide? When the rocks are going to cry out, there is no hiding place down here. Amen. Even now you can't hide because God sees you in the dark and he sees you in the light. He sees you wherever you are and wherever you go. Are you following me today? If you want to make it into God's kingdom, you must believe in the power of the cross. What happened at the cross? At the cross, at the cross, Jesus carried your sins. He carried my sins. He bore the penalty of our sins. The penalty was what? Death. He died that we can live. We have to believe in the power of the gospel. We have to confess our sins. Say, Lord, I am a sinner. I have messed up. Maybe you're a backslider. You can say, Lord, I'm coming home. Yes, I thought that turning my back upon you, it would have been well. But I find myself in a deeper predicament and I want to come out because I'm not enjoying it where I am at this moment. Hallelujah. You need to invite Jesus into your life to believe, to be your Lord and your Savior. Will you do that today? We are told, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved. But we had close your eyes with me, please. Hallelujah. And I want to give somebody an invitation. Listen to me. I have to be bold. The devil is bold. The people out there bold. We have to be bold. You are here in this building online. You hear this word, and the Spirit of the Lord has witnessed to you, saying, It is time for you to give up. It is time for you to turn your life over. It is time for you to turn a new page in your life. Will you raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want to give my life to Jesus. Is there someone in this building? Don't be ashamed. Is there someone in this building? Don't be afraid. Just raise that hand. This is your eternal destiny. And this is something that you have to decide for yourself. What are you going to do today? Jesus' last words. Don't let your heart trouble. I'm going to prepare a place for you. And I'll come and receive you. But for you to go there, you must turn him as your Lord and save you. No amount of song that you sing, no amount of money you give to the church, no amount of good deeds you do will qualify you, my friends. You have to come to the way. One more minute. Is there someone here today who will raise your hand and say, Pastor, pray for me. I want Jesus to be the Lord of my life. I have lived my life for myself for many years. I have experienced many frustration and, 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 and disappointment in life. But I believe that things can be better. I want to make it right with my maker. I don't know what will happen to me when I leave this building or tonight. It therefore means I have to ensure that I make it right with God before I'm ever too late. Is there someone here? Let us pray. Father, thank you for your word. Thank you for your spirit, Lord. I just want to praise and honor you today for your goodness towards us. This word is a witness to those who are not saved. Oh, Holy Spirit, may you continue to speak to them. Maybe you're there. Maybe you can say, Lord Jesus, forgive me of all my sins. Come into my heart. Save me and make me a child. If you pray and pray and believe, the Bible says, 
you are saved. What you can do is to contact us or some pastor who lives next to you and say, I have given my life to Jesus and I'm willing to live for him for the rest of my life. You can do that, my friend. I want the family to stand, please. Stand, please. Father, Jesus went when his friend lost his life. He was so connected to him and them that he went. There are other reasons associated with him weeping, but God, I believe he wept because he felt for them. We all feel for Sister Liz's family and friend. Because God, we know what that does. It takes our loved one away from us. We will not see them for now. However, it is possible to see them. Because you want to bring them back, Lord. And you're going to come for us. I pray that the family will be encouraged. Lord, they will live their life. They will not be so disturbed that they cannot think or sleep or eat or function or to love their family. I pray for your strength upon them now. God of comfort, comfort by your spirit. Lord, touch now, touch Lord. Speak to their hearts today. We pray that you're going to send people in their lives to encourage them. To tell them all is not lost. There is hope. Hope for tomorrow. One of these days, if they continue to be faithful, they will see Sister Liz. So God bless them. Keep them. Those who are not saved, may they surrender your life to you, Lord. Oh God, bind them together. May they stick together. Father, teach them whatever lesson you want them to learn. And may they learn well. May you be their provider. Sustain, protect them, God. Cover them under the blood. Let no harm, no evil come nigh them. Oh God, may their hearts be grateful. May they always be grateful to you. And give thanks to you for your goodness. So I bless them now with your mercy, with your grace and your strength. God, may they place their hands in yours today and ask you to lead them continually in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. God bless you. God keep you. It's a blessing be upon us all as we show respect and obedience, obedience to him. We have a final day for God. But we stand at this time that's a wonderful message. I just want to thank the Lord for using Pastor Edwards today. And I hope that, that what you would have said would have pierced your heart. Blessed are sure.
Now we have gathered here to commit to rest the body of our loved ones and friends. Here is the form of one whose memory we shall treasure. Some of us have shared through these passing years a wonderful companionship with our loved ones. Let us cherish the many memories that come to us at this time. Let us, each of us here, purpose to seek the Lord with all our heart and respond to the opportunities of salvation extended to us through his grace. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? That comes from Psalms 27, 1. We then as workers together with him also plead with you not to receive the grace of God in vain. For he says, I am acceptable time. This is the acceptable time. I have heard you. And in the day of salvation, I have helped you. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. That is found in 2 Corinthians 6, 1 to 2. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Shall not be judged of all the earth do right. Let us pray. Our Father, we give thanks to you today for your goodness towards us. We thank you for the life of this place. We thank you for our friends, our brothers, sisters, our siblings, our daughters, and even all those who are here today to show solidarity to the grieving family. Lord, we pray that our death will cause us to reflect on our own lives, that God life is short, and that we must order our days Lord, we want to know, should that take us, we are ready, we are prepared. So we pray today that you will help us to number our days and to prepare our hearts so that when you would call us, we will say, here we are, Lord, we are ready to go. So we give thanks and praise to you, we pray, in Jesus' name, amen. Okay, let's have another song, a chorus, and then you can proceed to cover this. I'll be waiting up yonder for you. Okay, go ahead, somebody started. I'll be waiting up yonder for you, yes I will. I'll be waiting up yonder for you. Oh, oh, oh. oh yes, yes, if you yes, go ahead. Down there, and you cannot find me nowhere. Come on up to the city of glory. I'll be waiting up there. I know you're going to miss me. I'm gone, <laughs> but don't you worry about me. I'll be like home and home and home. I'll be waiting up yonder for you. Yes, I will. I'll be waiting up yonder for you. Oh, oh, oh. If you
We heard a little children say, I want to say. We heard a little children say, 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 say. Yeah, but I said good night. How do you like it? Like the light of light. Like the light of light.
Huh? Somebody gonna take me? You gonna take me? Okay. Cheese! <laughs> 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 